hello friends welcome to my channel so in this video i'm going to tell you how we can do threading in python and if you don't know what threading is you can watch my last video threading basically means running a sequence of code so in a program when you write a program and when you run a program for example some command you start a process and there is this feature provided by operating system which allows us to run multiple sequence of instructions at same time basically you can run two while loops and it's super cool so let me just open firefox and emacs so on for firefox we are just going to look into the python threading docs now the thing is that uh, you just need to read docs and you will now understand docs because you understand the concept of threading if you watch my last video or if you just read it somewhere else okay so if you understand the concept of threading you can read the docs so this is uh, there was some video i did a long time ago where i was discussing the tools and concept so this is a tool this is how we are going to use threading concept which we discussed uh, you know previously so let me just open a uh, create a new file in code so let's call it tem.py and this is just going to start a python instance all right so let's just import from threading import thread all right so let me increase the font so what we are going to do now this is the module which we are going to run so what 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 is our goal okay so if i have a function for example a and if there is some while loop while true and if i run a print statement inside so hello or run this thread okay so we got this function here and we can also put time dot sleep so i don't have time so import time all right so yeah this is clean so time dot sleep and let's put one second okay so now what we can do is we can just run this for like create another function b which is quite similar but instead of run this thread uh, okay so let's call it thread one or yeah thread zero let's call it thread zero and let's call it thread one okay or let's call it two and thread one so now what we are going to do is i'm going to run this b function and you know what will happen it will end up in this infinite loop this loop will never ends and if i want to run both these loops at the same time then i i can run a but then b will run and b will never end because of the infinite loop and then a will never get his chance because b will never end so there is no way to run both these while loop at same time parallelly actually there is and that's what i'm about to show you okay so what i can do is uh let me just put a main now in case if you don't know this is okay let's just not write it so x is equal to let's call it t okay so t1 we are going to create a thread so we have to use a thread class and you can read the docs to understand the thread class so i don't know like how to go okay so let me scroll up and down up down up down okay so yeah you can see this is this is the thread class and it's going to take this target so what is the target target is basically the function name which we can pass which we want to run as a thread all right so in our case all right so one second so in our case the target will be target will be uh, a function or b function so let's just call b function as a thread okay so this is an object which we created but right now it's just an object so python is going to handle everything whatever happened inside so python is super awesome okay these guys are not letting us manage like they are, they're providing so much for us okay so this is why i love python so let me just call the start method and what will happen now is at this moment this moment all right moment okay moment it's just going to start the b function but it won't run in our main thread so this is our main thread this is our main series of you know sequence but this will basically we will end up creating two threads so in your whole life when you write python programs and if you have no idea about threading all you do is you just run one series one sequence of commands you just write single threaded programs and the first thread is called as main thread so the only thread uh, which you write you just use one thread basically all right but th this time 
what we are going to do is we are going to run this b function in a thread uh, which is this uh, this thread it will get started and the program won't stop at this line okay global display this program won't stop at line 16 program will move on and what we can do here we can call a function now so now we are going to run this b function all right here as you can see the target is b and a both all right so let's just save this program and let me quickly open a terminal so this is the terminal i got plenty of programs here let me create a directory like yt and move this stem.py into yt and go to yt and rename this stem.py one second oh uh, yeah global yeah rename this stem.py to a.py for the cleanness so let's just run a.py okay so now what will happen is we are printing thread one and thread two both it means we are running both the while loops all right so uh, let me just split the screen split the screen and go up and open temp there is no temp.py let's just open uh, yt slash a.py so here you can see we had two while loops and below we are running both the while loops now here let me just stop it now here is something interesting okay so if you notice i don't know if you noticed or not here you might think first we are printing thread one and then thread two all right but if you look close i'm pretty sure you will find some case where this is not true for example this so we are printing thread two thread two two times now this is something which will fuck you up in your programming career if you don't understand and if you end up using threads why because in my last video i showed you threads uh threading wikipedia all right so right now i'm in laptop i don't have that image here so i'm recording this video from my bed because it's it's the first time i am using my computer not using my pc and using my laptop like this like on on bed uh, which is really not what i prefer so here i told you that scheduler is like a god it works as mysterious ways so I, we can't tell when scheduler is going to switch all right so since i put a sleep here uh there are you know we are still getting somewhat accurate a result we are getting thread one thread two but in reality things can go wrong and you know thread the scheduler can randomly just switch uh the context like it will it will just switch these threads randomly now why we use threads it's really good for input output so i wrote a script long time ago i'm not sure if i have that let me just go okay i have that so on my git server you can find that script valdl one of my friend converted it into a threading you know thread thread script so right now what this script is doing it's downloading one wallpaper at a time so i get the links of multiple wallpapers so uh, I have made a video about it if you want you can see it but what you can do now is you can convert it into multi-thread script where you are downloading each uh, wallpaper by using a new thread or at least having uh, for example six threads so you can read this entire page where it's going to tell some functions which you can use so I, I read like I use almost 50% uh, of these things so, so for example you can print out uh, what is the current thread uh, let's let me just show you so you, you we we just ex use this function start function uh, there is this function join function which actually makes sure uh, the parent thread which creates a you know new thread if if that thread is uh, is you know if the child thread finish um, or not finished okay okay just read this I, I'm sure but uh, all right so basically what it says is if you are running a thread and that thread runs another thread so what will happen is if your your thread won't end so if i join if a function finish for some reason and if i type t dot one join so it's going to wait for your child thread to finish so that's all this thing do sorry i okay so is alive is for checking alive one thing which you also might need to know is if you are doing thread programming then there is this thing log so what log do is if I have some global variable like you know x is equal to 0 or 10 whatever and I just I'm just using this global here somewhere so if I if I'm trying to change the global value 
and this is the same thing which i am doing in you know like the other function so there is this one data value so threads actually share the data all right so if if there is some global variable it it will get shared okay so if i try to do change in values uh, which is something which is present in both the threads now the issue which can happen is that you know so this this statement here trying to change the value of x but at the same time this also try to do it okay so this can cause issues it, it's in the middle of changing the value but the thread switch and now we try to execute this so this can create some issues so this is why what we do is we create a lock object you know a simple lock object and then we we first acquire the lock so it's it's it looks kind uh, something like this like l is equal to lock okay so lock is something which we have to import uh, lock and then what you do is you create uh, you type like uh, l dot acquire okay acquire yeah i think i misspelled l dot a okay l dot acquire yeah and then l dot release so l dot release okay why it's not okay all right so what this will do is uh, it won't let any other thread to execute this uh, uh, use this variable until the log dot release but for all the data structures for all the variables it get really complicated it get really messy threads are really good for doing some uh, normal input output don't do any computation in threads if you do computation if you think okay i got a heavy computation i got some really huge numbers to do some you know multiplication a lot of multiplication and you thought about like just dividing those into multiple threads so it will happen fast no it won't because threads only use one cpu it's just one process and the cpu cannot overwork okay cpu will work with the same amount in fact it can even degrade the amount of the quality of your work and it can even you know just cost you more time so don't do threading for complicated things and as a home like so try to change your script if you are doing a lot of networking calls if you're waiting for some input so suppose you are waiting for some input by user okay so user have to send some input then at that time you might be able to do something else by using thread so uh, user is uh, your program is waiting for user input but you are doing something else now right now i'm using emacs and emacs is actually a single threaded program and this is why every time i start emacs it freeze for a second because emacs if it's running a while loop so you you just saw if you are running a while loop then emacs is actually going is not able to do anything else like emacs won't be able to like emacs cannot do anything else so this sucks so emacs is single threaded uh, but yeah it works so uh, there are a lot of ways i think you can I, i'm not sure uh, but yeah emacs is single threaded so just read more about threading read this entire page it's really useful it's really good you can give some signals to an, uh, one another thread there are a lot of ways to uh, mechanism to you know synchronize threads because most of the time when you write a multi-thread program you want some kind of synchronization uh, i did a project uh, where I'll, I'll discuss that later actually i will make a video about multi-processing and from there like after that i'm planning to make one more video about async so maybe i'll discuss that later so that's it for this video i just wanted to show you some uh, you know example of really basic example of the real world like how threads work so that's it that's for the video